Yo, what up YouTube? It's your boy Joe Barber. And uh, I'm putting this video out because I want to explain to some people how things work in a barber shop. And these are for the young barbers or up and coming barbers, uh, people that are working booth rent and um, trying to build up clientele. I'm just going to give you all some pointers real quick and um, hopefully it'll help somebody because I have a reoccurring issue in my shop and uh, the, the problem with me that I feel is that I'm very lenient. I'm very like understanding. I really do care about people in general. Um, I've had people give me sob stories. I've had people just recently, there was a barber here by the name of Ralph that, uh, you know, I looked out for him, gave me a sob story about, you know, what's going on in his life. He got hurt at a concert, this and that, woo, woo, woo blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, all right, man, you know, I'll, I'll let you slide, bro. I know you got stuff going on. Just be here, be here, be here, blah, blah, blah. Uh, ended up leaving, didn't give me a two week notice. And uh, a couple of other barbershop owners had told me that he was going to do this to me. And I was like, nah, man, he ain't going to do that to me. He knows all the stuff I've been through. I've known to do for a long time. You know, he knows I'm, you know, just uh, looking out for him. I'm trying to help him. Uh, maybe it's what he needs, someone like me to kind of guide him and help him and try to be the example, whatever. Um, was never here on time, always told me he was going to be here on time, was never on time, always left early, always had an excuse to leave, always had something going on other than being a barber. Uh, and I'm all for the hustle. If you have a second job and you have other, man, believe me, uh, I understand that, but it can never conflict with the commitment that you have to the barbershop. The way the barbershop works, ladies and gentlemen, any shop you work at, you're building up a brand. And the brand is the shop. If it's not your shop, you're contributing to that brand because the better that brand does, then the better you're going to do. Um, you're pouring into a brand. Now, eventually, you'll one day be able to pour into your own brand or you can establish your own brand within this brand, but still don't neglect building the brand. At the end of the day, you're, we're all pour, pouring from the same cup and the shop is the same cup. But if everybody keeps pouring from that cup and not pouring into the cup, believe me, the cup is going to run dry. Uh, if you have a gallon of water and everybody's pouring out, so everybody wants the walk-ins. You, so you're, this, you, have a, you have this and this is the shop and these are all customers and everybody wants to take from the customers, but nobody wants to pour back into it and be like, okay, man, I'm, this is what I'm going to do in exchange for you providing customers. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to clean. I'm going to be there on time. Even when it's slow, I'm going to pr promote on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever. That's how you pour back into the business and the business grows strong and it's a balance. So when you pay booth rent, the booth rent that you're paying for covers the wear and tear on the equipment, which is the chair, the station, mirrors, uh, all that kind of stuff. And that's what you're paying for. You're paying for the parking, you're paying for the environment, security, you're paying for uh, cameras, you're paying for insurance, you're paying for refrigerator, you know, uh, some of the materials that we use in the restroom, little things like that is what your, what your booth rent contributes to. It doesn't contribute to walk-ins. It doesn't contribute to me, my promotion. Like I promote the shop because it's my shop. Yes, but your booth rent doesn't cover that. Your booth rent doesn't cover after hour cuts. Your booth rent doesn't cover days that the shop is closed. It does not cover that. Now, if anybody wants to have that kind of uh, access, then you can go get a suite and the suites are more expensive here in San Antonio. I know there's some suites that are 270 a week. They don't provide any clientele. All they provide is a little, you know, 10 by 10 room, if not smaller, or maybe bigger, uh, it may have a sink in it and you share a community restroom. Um, you have access to it, but there's no storefront. There's no, they don't make flyers for you. They don't do none of that stuff. All they do is provide the opportunity, the room, and then you make, you make it pop off. And if you make it pop off, great. And if you don't, you can't write, write a review of, man, this place does not give me any walk-ins. No, that's the... That's that's the agreement that you made when you got your own suite. Now, if you don't have the clientele to be in a suite, then don't do that to yourself because you're going to lose big time. When you commit to a barbershop, 
that's you saying, you know what, man, I don't have a lot of clientele, but this is what I bring to the table and I'm going to be committed. I'm going to get there, you know, 20 minutes early. I don't mind staying 20 minutes late. And that's the exchange. But if you think you can come in like, oh, I pay my booth rent. I can come in when, whenever I want. No, that's not how it works, man. You agree to work the shop from open to close. And if that's not the commitment that you have, then you need to go open up your own shop, especially for people that don't even have a license and they want to be treated uh, like they're, you know, the best barber or whatever, or your skill. Well, I don't care about that, bro. Get your license and, and then understand that it's a grind, daily commitment. You know, if you want to take a day off, I take two days off. I take Wednesday off and I take Sundays off. Uh, Wednesdays I take off because that's when I go and pay bills and do all types of stuff. But the thing I want to let barbers know is like, or up and coming people is like, you have to be committed, man. There's no excuses. We all have problems. You know, when I started, man, man, we didn't have any, we didn't have, uh, all the, you know, uh, social media that y'all have now. I mean, there's so many ways to build up. You can pay for ads. You can Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. I mean, you name it, YouTube. You can build your brand. It takes a level of commitment. Waking up early. You should be posting uh, your little digital flyers. And if you have to pay somebody, pay somebody to make you three or four digital flyers and every day post one. Every day, switch it, switch it, switch it. And, or learn on YouTube. There's different apps you can download. I mean, it's all on you. When you say you're an entrepreneur, that's what you are. You're, you have to be committed that way. But at the same time, while you're building up your little brand, you have to be committed to building the shop because the shop is where you're going to gain clientele. Um, and I've believe me, man, I've tried helping people. I try to give people game. I've been doing this for 20 years, man. I promise you, I started off. I used to bring sandwiches to my to the shop when I would work. I used to we used to pitch in and buy a pizza and all of us got two slices. I mean, there was a time when I couldn't, I would go home and eat cereal. That was my dinner. That was my breakfast. That was my lunch. Whatever the hell I had at home, that's what I ate, bro. And I just went to sleep, got back up and let's get to it. And it was like that for a year um, at one point because I was in a relationship at the time and I separated from my girl at the time that I was with. And it was just me and I had, you know, my my apartment. I don't know what my apartment was like a thousand dollars that I had to pay by myself at the time. This is, you know, a long time ago. This is about 15 years ago. Uh, but the fact is that no matter what happens in life, like I couldn't sit there and mope and oh man, my girlfriend lived, blah, blah, blah. No, bro, I had to get to it. You know, and I say, you know what, I'm going to grind. So I would get to the shop early and stay late. But the owner would always say, look, if you're going to stay late, get your ass here early. Get here early and commit. Because then I know that we're not working out of convenience. We're working because I see you hustling. That's a difference. When you're hustling, you respect where you eat at. You never want to poop where you eat. And that's what happens with some of these barbers. They think like, no, nah, I pay rent. I can do whatever I want. No, you can't. And for me, I'm at that point to where as much as I care about people, I have to make an executive decision. i rather excuse those people and just let them go and be like, you know what, bro? You, you seem like you got it figured out the way you think it should work. Then you go do that on your own and go be someone else's problem. Because i rather be without that money that they bring to the table and just make it myself because it's not worth the exchange of energy. It's not worth the, the, the problems that that person brings. And it sucks when there's multiple people because they see another person do it. He's like, well, I'm going to do it too. And it's like, man, all of y'all are just going to lose. You're all going to lose because y'all think that that's how it works. And it doesn't work that way. Y'all are, instead of copying me or trying to get, you know, um, follow my my regimen you want to follow the next man's regimen i'm like are you trying to get where he's at or are you trying to get where i'm at where you're an owner you're established you're making you know 15 to two thousand dollars a week you want to get to that point it takes work it takes work it, and it doesn't matter dude i have to wake up at five six o'clock six o'clock in the morning still got to take my son to school which it takes me an hour because of the traffic and then when I'm done with him, I run a little bit of errands and come straight over here. And then I'm here at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, whatever time it is that I get here, depending on the traffic. And I'm here till close. I try to be here till close and still have to deal with whatever problems I got to deal with, paying bills, dealing with my realtor, dealing with the you know owners of the building, whatever it is, man, answering you know emails, answering messages from our Google 
um, dealing with barbers that have issues, dealing with people that are not here, that are not committed. That I mean, and that's just the life of an owner, man. And I've talked to owners all over, to owners in Florida, owners in Pennsylvania, owners in New York, owners in Cali. I mean, we all have the same problems. Everybody thinks that, um, well, a lot of the younger guys think that it's like, nah, man, the world revolves around me. You need to get your head out of, get it out of there. Get, get that mess out of there, man. I'm telling you, it's not as easy as you think it is to run a business. And it's not easy to keep everything balanced. I mean, even me, I was having anxiety. I was having all types of issues uh, months ago. And I had to like push all that aside and be like, man, I still got to be at the shop. I still got to be committed. I still got to be there for my customers. I still have to keep the shop clean. I still have to like all these things I had to do. And I'm only one person. So I know that I can't sustain 14 barbers or whatever we have working here. And everybody has their own problem. And I'm like, look, man, I, I'll, I'll plead with you and I'll be there for you. I'll show you love. But the fact is that this is a business. And if you're not committed to the business, the business will not be committed to you. You cannot expect the shop to be there for you and the shop to support you and the shop to give you all these walk-ins and to be here if you're not you know, here for the shop. And by being here on time, by being committed, by building yourself up, by showing, you know what, man, I'm going to take the initiative and create my flyer. I'm going to create my business cards. I'm going to make a YouTube. I'm going to make a Facebook. I'm going to make an Instagram. I'm going to make a Twitter. I'm going to make a TikTok. And just when you're not cutting hair, promote it. You got to manifest that stuff in your mind and be like, you know what, man, I'm going to make myself one of the best barbers. I'm going to keep my chair busy. I'm going to make sure that wherever I go, I got a business card so I can build up my clientele. It took me a long time to get where I'm at, man. I've been on magazines. I've been on TV shows. I've been on all types of stuff and I'm still hungry. And I'm like, man, no matter how much money I got in the bank, no matter what car I'm driving, no matter like what's going on in my life, I just won, you know, $5,000 uh, uh, last week on a... Tuesday or a Monday at the CT Barber Expo. And guess what, man? I was still here. I was like, bro, I already made five G's this week. And then I still had to cut my clients. And I was back to back the day I was, uh, I was back to back Thursday, Friday and Saturday. So I made like $1,200 just back to back, like no lunch. I think I sat down for 30 minutes each day because I have like, sometimes I have 30 minute gaps, but dude, I, I sincerely, I, I don't eat lunch because my app, everybody prepays for my haircuts and you can, you know, book your appointment weeks ahead or a month ahead, whatever it may take. Uh, it's a, it allows you, it reminds you three times. It'll text you. It'll email you to let you know that your appointment is, you know, booked that, you know, confirm it, blah, blah, blah. A lot of my customers, man, pay me 60 to a hundred bucks. Sometimes they pay me more. I have one client that pays me 300, you know, and it's, I'm not bragging this. I don't care about that dude, but I'm saying when you commit yourself and you allow yourself to be at your at your highest point it's like mentally you commit and you're like you know what man i'm not gonna fail i'm gonna go hard and when i'm not working i'm gonna be promoting if i'm not promoting i'm learning i'm following someone on you know on uh, youtube and and learning from them uh whether it's uh having how to cut hair how to how to Make sure that uh, I'm growing my, my brand, how to make a logo, how to whatever, man, like all aspects of business you want to learn, how to save money, how to, you know, there's so many things that you can do to build your brand and help the brand. But if you're being selfish and you can't even control your thoughts and how to get to work on time, believe me, man, you're just going to keep failing and failing and failing. And it's nobody's fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. It's it's my fault if I fail. It's your fault if you fail. Because nobody's going to come and save you. It's nobody's job to get you busy. It's nobody's job to put clippers and, and all types of stuff in your hands to make you make money. It's like, no, dude, if you fail yourself, think of all the other people that you're failing behind you, whether it's your wife, your kids, your mom, your dad, whoever invested in you, whoever is applauding you, whoever is rooting for you, you're letting them down. So how disrespectful is it that you don't apply yourself daily? Wake up with a purpose, you know, because it's easy to sit there and be in bed. Oh, man, I ain't doing nothing. I'm going to chill. Let me sleep till 12 and I'll, I'll go cut two heads and come back. How is that getting closer to your goal? How is that you uh, building up the brand? How is that you committed to the craft? Like it's not. 
You know what I'm saying? And I'm not trying to hurt nobody's feeling. I don't got all the answers, man. I'm a human just like you. I make mistakes. I've made plenty of mistakes in my life, bro. I, I As much talent as I have, I've, I've blown it before, man. I lost my ambition. I lost my desire at one point. You know, you get to a point like that sometimes, man. But it's okay because you're human. You have emotions. You have to grow. You have to go through things in order for you to understand and learn. But at the same time, man, don't do it at somebody else's expense. Whether you're living at home with your mom or whoever's supporting you, man, don't take them for granted because they have every right to pull back their energy. They have every right to pull back their love. They have every right to pull back their their connection to you because people want to support other people that are grinding. If you don't grind for yourself, how am I going to grind for you? How am I going to push? I want, I want us to be shoulder to shoulder. I'm not here to carry nobody to the top of the mountain, man. I'm here to show you how I got to where I'm at. And I want you to pass me up. I want you to get higher. I want you to do more. But if you can't do the basic fundamentals, being on time, respecting the shop, and then, you know, sometimes with the music, we have access to, you know, I have two speakers here. I have an iPad that we play music on. The music is not for you. The music is for the customers. The music is to create the ambiance of people being here and waiting. Just like when you're in an elevator, they're not playing crazy music. They want you to relax. When you're at a shopping center, when you're at a mall, when you're at a store, they play good music that makes you feel good so you can shop in peace, so you can shop and spend money. That's what the, the, the atmosphere is for. So you can be relaxing, no tension. They don't want it to be turned up when you're somewhere like that. Like the music is not for you. It's for the customers. So when people walk in, that music has to be rated E for everybody, not rated E for explicit. You never want to be playing that kind of music, man. And you either sit down and make a playlist uh, that you can all agree upon. And, uh, you know, I, for me, it's like take 10 songs from each barber that they like that doesn't have bad words. And we all make one playlist for the shop. And then you collectively add to it as you go. But that's how it has to be. Some people don't understand that. They think that we can listen to all these bad words and this and that. Like, no, bro. And you have to understand the power with words. There's power behind words. That's why it's called a spell, spelling. It's a spell that they put out with words. And if you don't understand that, go look it up, man. Um, but anyway, I don't want to veer off from the topic. The topic is be committed to yourself, be committed to the shop, then the shop can be committed to you. All barbers out there or all stylists, please understand that I'm pleading with you, man, because I want to see you do well. I want to see you succeed. I want you to make it. I want you to be somebody. You don't have to be famous to be somebody. You just have to be authentic. You have to be genuine and you really got to care about you. So people then in return can help you get where you want to be. You know, I'm just here to be a guide for people. When I open my barber college, that's all I am is a guide. I'm a mentor. I can tell you everything that I've done. I've, I've accomplished so much in life, man. And I've messed up many times. I've messed up. So if you can learn from my mistakes and you can learn from my experience and I can guide you in the right direction, I can kind of tweak you a little bit and help you. If I have to be a father figure, have to be a brother, an uncle, whatever you need me to be, I'll be. But you have to be committed to yourself. I can't believe in you if you don't believe in you. Let me say that again. I cannot believe in you if you don't believe in you. You have to believe in you. You have to be the one, even on the rainy days, believe in yourself. Even on the hot days, believe in yourself. Even on the cold days, believe in yourself. I'm telling you, man, a lot of us, we, we never reach our full potential because we're afraid of a little pain. We're afraid of a little discomfort. We're afraid of a little bit of change. But I promise you, man, it's it's those moments that defy you. Those moments that when people are like, oh, no, nah, man, I'm, I'm chill. I'm, let me stay back here. Or it's going to be like, you know what, man? I'm going to have to go through this eventually, so let me take this head on. As much as it may hurt, I'm going to push forward. I'm going to trust God because I'm here, and this is not a coincidence that you're here. It's not a coincidence that you're watching this video. I'm trying to help people. I'm trying to build people up, but I can't force you to grow. I can't yell at a flower and be like, come on, flower, grow. No, all I can do is fertilize it and give it water. Fertilize it and give it water. Fertilize it and give it water. And one day that thing's going to bloom and I'm going to be like, I, I never stop believing in you because you never stop believing in you. You know what I'm saying? So regardless of that, I just want people to know, man, that it takes a lot of respect, takes a lot of consequences that also in return by you taking initiative and the consequences of your actions, whether it's good or bad, that's what's going to help you grow. 
That's going to help you see, even through the mistakes, does it mean like, oh, I made a mistake, man, I'm a loser. No, don't do that. Say, you know what? What did I do wrong? Look at yourself in the mirror and be like, what did I do wrong? What can I do better? And every day you have to talk like that to yourself. I know people think you're crazy, man, when you're talking to yourself, but it's not because in this world, you came in by yourself and you're going to leave by yourself. You have to understand that, man. But we're here to make a difference. Us barbers and stylists, we're healers of the world, man. We touch everybody's head, we cut their hair, and we can speak life into their ear or we can speak death into their ear. That's why we're considered healers because, I, man, people come and tell us their problems, whether it's marriage, whether it's, you know, I've had come to, uh, customers that had cancer. My son had cancer. Like, there's a lot of stuff that happens in life, man. And a lot of people, they talk to us and we're here. We're in the service industry. We need to understand that. But you have to be committed to the craft. You have to be committed to the craft and invest in yourself. But if you don't respect yourself enough to respect the craft, then in return to respect the establishment that you're working in, and then you better get all that fixed, man, because I promise you all you're going to do is burn bridges. You're going to burn bridges and you're going to end up lonely and you're going to be blaming everybody else but yourself. I promise you. So, all right, man, well, I, this is my spiel, but I want y'all to know, man, I really do care about people, man. I really want people to to succeed. I want people to make it. I want people to be the best that they can be, but I can't force anyone to do it. I cannot force anyone to do it, man. It's it's unfortunate that I've had a, a, a few, more than a few people come through my shop. They come here and they expect, man, oh, I'm working with Joe Barber, man. Shop should be busy every day. Like, no. Yes, the shop does well, but you have to carry your own. You have to put in your own work around here. You have to carry your own load. You got to carry your own cross. All that applies. I can help you. I can guide you. You don't pay me to be your mentor. I do that out of love. But when you abuse it, then I'm going to pull my energy back. I'm going to be like, hey, you do you then, man. And if I got to let you go, I'll let you go because God's going to provide no matter what. And I got to trust in that. The right people that are here are going to stay and they're going to ride. And the ones that don't belong, they're going to leave. Like I said, I had more than a few people come and take advantage of my love, take advantage of my, my experience. They want to learn everything from me and then just leave and go somewhere else. I had family members do that to me and that I put them in the game. And that's why I, I learned, man, it's not even about the love, man. Love, love is not strong enough. And it's not that my love is not strong enough. It's that people's love, their, their understanding of what love is, is not strong enough. So sometimes it's all about loyalty, respect. And fear, the fear, not in a sense of harming somebody, the fear of like, look, man, either you follow these rules or you got to go. And it's like, then people are like, ah, man, I don't want to lose my opportunity here. Sometimes that's the best way they can function. That's the best way because they're functioning on living check to check or they're functioning in survivor mode. Fear is the only thing that really gets them to focus, unfortunately. And sometimes that happens to us. God has to put the fear in us for us to listen to God. No matter how much love he shows us, sometimes it's the fear that gets us to snap and be like, oh, man, you know, I better I better straighten myself out because I could have went to prison because I did that. Or I could have went to jail because I did that. Or I could have lost my life because I did that. And that fear gets you back in focus, you know, and God can be showing you so much love. And you'll be like, oh, man, I'm just no, man, that's not how you grow. Comfort is the killer of all joy, man. Comfort is the killer of all joy. You lose your hunger, you lose your drive, you lose your passion, you lose when you're too comfortable. Every now and then, yeah, it's good, man, to enjoy. But I'm telling you, man, in this life, you're always going through the cycle. And either you're repeating the same cycle or you finish that cycle and you break that chain and you move up and you level up to it. And it's going to be the same thing. New level, new devils. That's just how it is. But you got to continue to grow and you got to continue to detach yourself from emotional responses. You know, things happen and you could get upset because you have emotions, but don't get mad and ah, let me break everything. No, that's immature. And that's only going to hurt you in the long run. Um, so that's another thing. But that's another story. But anyway, man, if you watch the whole video, God bless you. And I hope everything works for you. I hope that this video reaches the right people. I hope it motivates you to, you know, look at yourself in the mirror and look into your eyes, look into your soul and be like, man, I'm here for a reason. God created me not just to exist, but to perform, to have a purpose, to make a difference. 
you want to leave this earth better than you found it. And that's my mission. And I'm going to do that to the death. You know, I got five wonderful sons that I'm also going to have to teach to also do the same thing because I don't want them to just exist. I don't want to just exist. And I don't want you just to exist. You have a higher calling, man. You just got to tap in and be ready. All right. Y'all stay blessed and y'all stay faded.